Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing with another video. Today's um, video is about a head that I've ported and this is the Brodix 18C head casting. A customer brought this in. He just wanted me to port them and make them better and um, he'll be dyno them after they're all done. And so I thought I'd show you um, what's been done to them and how things have changed and what they flowed before and after. Just, you know, kind of give you a little bit of information. So let's start off with what they flowed before. Okay. So I just go there. There we go. All right. These are the before numbers. And I did, this is a 4155 bore, no exhaust pipe. So you have, you know, I look at the 400 number, 259.3, pretty low. At 600, it's 352, pretty good. And then I didn't get the peak because what happened was the valve ran out of, um, travel so it couldn't open any further and that was done but it flowed best it flowed was 358 on the intake side and that looks at 700 which it really is not that bad and you're like well, no that sucks for an 18 degree head um brodix designs this head really more for circle track and most of their stuff is and you might say wait a minute i thought it was for drag racing i promise you is it's a much smaller port than you think matter of fact i think that when it first started the cross-sectional area was like 2.6 Perfect for a roundy round car, and that's what they more target for. And the reason why is if you look at it from their point of view, they're gonna sell more heads to roundy round guys because they're more likely to blow up a motor instead of a drag guy. I mean, they turn more laps and they just, they, there's more wear and tear on the engine, so most likely they'd buy a new set of heads. Plus they, uh, you know, they rules might change and further on. So anyway, point me is since they sell more, they try to target the area that they're selling. Obviously that circle track. So the port itself was smaller, but this guy was running on a drag car and I don't have the numbers, but he was in a Vega and it, it did pretty good, um, really good. Exhaust side, it flowed 246 at peak without an exhaust pipe. Now, when I got them, it had a 218 intake valve and a 1625 exhaust valve. That's how they come from Brodix. And another thing that might've hurt the flow numbers is this is the, um, I'll bring it over here. This is the intake valve that came on it came off of it i should say this is a 218 but it has hardly any back cut so you see the seat and you could barely see the back cut so of course that really does hurt the 400 number if you compare that to what the valve is now so what did i change i changed from a 218 intake valve to a 220 intake valve so much larger well not much larger but a larger intake valve I also went to a 516 stem on the intake instead of 1132nd. The idea is to save weight and also increases the area of throat, so it should move a bit more air and make the valve weigh less. The exhaust, because I made the intake bigger, had to shrink the exhaust. The exhaust went from a 1625 down to a 1.6. Now you might be saying, wait a minute, how do you do that? Well, you can get away with it if it had a 45 seat uh, initially. So it had a 45 degree seat that it was sitting on. Now it's on a 50 degree seat. So, um, because of that, the throat, um, it still end up bigger than what it was to begin with, but you can get away with that on the exhaust, not so much on the intake. Here's its valve. Now this is a custom one because it's a steel valve. In case you're wondering, this new valve with the 5.6 stem, and it's got way more here on the head than this one does. It weighs three grams heavier but it's a bigger head diameter and actually it's a little bit longer too but you can see it's got a much bigger back cut and because of that and i've done more pour work so the pretty much on the pour work side the pour got bigger and i'll try to kind of show you on the head here a little bit i'll just do it this way as you can tell the port got bigger and this is the head bolt here the center one these are 3 8 bolts on this in between one by the way so that one will not get sleeved because it's a 3 8 because the studs really seals it up pretty good and on that right there is the other head bolt hole which is that one okay that won't get sealed up and the reason why is because that one doesn't get exposed to anything else besides that so it's left open you're like oh my god how could you do that if you look at big block heads the long runner is almost always exposed so just to give an idea anyway you could tell nice shape on the short side and with all the changes what did it pick up so um just to recap made the throat bigger it's actually if i told you it's 92 percent. this is a 50 degree valve job now instead of a 45 
Um, the short side area, of course, got bigger, and so did the um, push rod pins. You could tell here on the size of the openings, which barely you can tell, but if I showed you before, it's much smaller opening, now it's larger. Um, the, the pinch went from a 2.6, it's now a 2.9. I could go a little bit larger, but I'm real hesitant because I don't know. Um, I saw his camshaft and it made me think he's not turning up enough RPM to take advantage of it, so I'm, that's it. I think this one's going to give him the best. But anyway, what did it, how did it do? I mean, what, what, how did, it, did you make any improvements? Let's see. Now that both of these are on the Sanyas, by the way. So this is the ported numbers. So if you look at 400 number, we went from a 259 to a 287, huge gain. Let's look at 600, 351.9 to 371.9, 20 CFM gain. Peak number, the best number I had here was 358. Now it's 391 at one. So, and it keeps climbing. Well, I had a little dip there, but I'm not sure if that wasn't because of something to do with the chamber or just capture a bad moment, but not too bad anyway. Exhaust side, even though the exhaust valve got smaller, by porting it, making the throat a little bit larger even than what it was before, because it had a pretty small throat, it actually um, still moved more air. So at 400, it did lose some, which that kind of happens when you make the throat bigger. And then at 600, gains. And then even the best number I'd ever had was 247 before. It's now right around 261 here at nine. Um, I probably should have kept going and tried making that exit a little bit bigger so it keeps going, but. It is what it is. I also filled this with the valve that he's not using, and I'm waiting for the valve that will go in this head to come in, and I'll reflow with that exhaust anyway. But I thought I'd show you that. So a good game. Now, by the way, this is on the Sanyas. Here's what it did on the Superflow. So I have two flow benches, and one leads a little bit different than the other. The Superflow makes it look like a champ. Now we're at 286, which compared to the Sanyas, it's down there. But 600, 376, that's better than the Sanyas. And then if you look, it doesn't do a dip at all. It continuously keeps rising. How the Sanyas dropped off just a little bit that picked up, the Superflow keeps gaining. And it's 396. Exhaust side went 268 on the Sanyas, so it was even better. I mean, on the Superflow. So, and these are all without a pipe. So, I think this is going to be a winner. It's going to be a pretty good one. It should run really well. So, anyway, um, there's that. But I kind of need to show you the other part that goes with this, the intake manifold. He is running this one, which I'm not even sure if you can get it anymore. This is a 2959. It's a one piece design, which is awesome because what it does, you know, you don't have to run the tray and then the spider separate, which it is, I'd rather, me personally, I'd rather have the spider, but this is all one piece. It kind of keeps things more um, together. This one, when you got it, it's now been, I went ahead and ported it, but when you get it, they usually run a mill down to about here. I'm literally right here. Oh, it's probably easy if I showed you this way. Here, this far away, and then it slopes this way, and also it just cuts the top of the of these dividers, so it's a sharp cut. I should have taken a picture before, but he had done some work to it. But anyway, um, I made the, because the pinch inside itself increased, I have to have to increase here because I want to make the taper the same ratio as, um, well, actually a little bit larger taper than what it was before. So because of that, I had to increase this, moved over this wall as well. I also raised them up because of before it was really small here. I'm going to try to attach a picture so you could see. I'd, I'd rough in three and left one side alone so you could see how much difference it was that's n that had to be removed. And I'll try to include this on the video when I edit, but it's a pretty neat deal. But anyway, this manifold's pretty nice. I mean, you got a lot of area here now. You got a pretty good shot to the runners, you can see. You can see part of the runner here, so it's not terrible. Um, it could be worse. But this one should be a really good runner for what it is. Having the all one piece should be a pretty good deal. Um, the sad part is I really don't think they make this anymore. But anyway, that's this manifold. Anyway, that's this manifold. Okay, I just want to do a little product highlight and tell you about the head. But I did have one more piece of bonus information for you guys because I thought, well, you know what? I saw it and I like, I'll just share it with you guys. If you guys are just done with looking at the head, or if you have, if you want more information about the head, uh, you can always contact me. Or um, what you could do is um, 
just bring it up in a comment and maybe I'll make another video about something else you might want to see because I'm still waiting. I got another, another week or so wait on these heads for the valves to come in. But anyway, here's your bonus thing. And if you want to stop now and you don't care, you can just turn it off. If any of you have watched the Loki series that's on um, uh, Disney Plus or whatever, the first episode of Loki, they actually mentioned a town in Oklahoma, which shocked me because I wouldn't have thought anybody would know, even know this town, especially someone from Hollywood who ever wrote this thing. But there was a town called Salina, Oklahoma. Okay? And it did a flashback to 1858. Well, I'm going to attach a video right now, to that, right after I get done talking, to what Salina is, not to me, known for. So, enjoy this. This is from Salina. You guys take care. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, hope you enjoy the video. It'll preview for next week. Um, probably going to talk about the Camaro on Friday. And uh, that hopefully on Sunday we'll do a discussion about Bob Wait. Sorry about the longer video. Uh, you guys take care. Bye.